Yeah. That brings up another important point here. Like we're we're talking about this these omnichannel, like seamless customer journeys, empowered associates, being able to serve the customer in right there, not to have to like go bring them to a cash wrap and then finish a transaction. This stuff is not not a new concept, but is the tech new? Like how is point of sale different now from a system that like most retailers would have been exploring even like three to five years ago. How, how is that different now? And like set that, set the stage for us of kind of where, what we're looking at right now as retail executives. Yeah. I think, I think for me, the, the key to answering that question is to think about the information that a store associate needs in order to effectively serve a customer. So, you know, even 10 years, I'll go 10 years back rather than the three to five, but even 10 years ago, the store associate might have actually known the most about a customer mm -hmm. because the primary channel for that interaction was the store. It was that store associate. It was all captured through point of sale. And that, you know, about 10 years ago, that really, really changed where actually corporate knows more about the customer than the store does. And from a point of sale perspective, if you've got a solution that's designed to basically suck as much information out of the store as you can, but not really provide any back, mm -hmm. then the store is at a disadvantage in that relationship with the customer. And I think that's the key difference. Like you can talk about, you know, oh, do you have a server in the store and the hardware and, and mobile or not, or all of that, but it's really about the information flow and making mm -hmm. sure that there's as much information flowing back into the store to enable that store associate as there is coming out of the store to enable corporate to understand what's happening with customers everywhere. Yeah, you know, it's a good question, Anne, because like when I think back to our store of the future days, that was eight years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And and quite honestly, quite frankly, it was hard to find a solution that could do what we wanted to do. Yeah. And one of the issues was bridging the gap between the online sales transaction logs and the in-store transaction logs. Can you Can you talk a little bit about how the solutions now are different than what was like in the market and, and what problems they actually help to overcome? So I think one of the, um, the biggest differences is having all of that data that's in the cloud and making it somehow accessible to the store. So, you know, we've treated stores as islands because we want them to be autonomous. We want them, you know, if that connection to corporate, if the internet goes down, you still want to be able to ring sales in the store. I mean, even if the power goes out, you still want to be able to ring sales in yeah. stores. And so that's dictated a lot of heavy footprint in the store that now we see a lot of retailers wanting to pull out because as soon as you have that tech footprint in the store, it really limits what you can do with that. You know, you, you can't access all of that real time digital, you know, heavy, high rich data environment that's happening in the cloud. Uh, and that's really, that's part of what we wanted to tackle was to take cloud native, to put it in the store, but to do it in a way where if you do lose that connection, you have the offline resiliency and you have enough data on your device that you can keep running things. So that's been um, almost from day one for us, it was a requirement, right? You can, you can uh, always get fired as a CIO <laughs> if if the stores can't transact, that's right. like the deal killer. Uh, and so it was definitely the first place that we wanted to make sure that we could solve that problem um, before we went anywhere else with omni-channel or you know, customer acquisition or any of that other kind of stuff. 